it's Bonnie with So Inspired by Bonnie with another Tuesday's tip. And today we're going to discuss organizing your patterns. Getting that pattern collection, I hate to call it a stash because that always seems negative, getting that pattern collection under control. So I'm going to refresh my computer page and make sure that uh, we have some people here that might be showing up uh, a tad late. So we'll check and see. I see some likes and loves, so that's good. I know some of you are showing up. The computer's being a little slow. There we are. Okay. Hi, Anna. Hi, Carol. Good to see you guys. Okay, so what I mentioned before is go ahead and give me a shout out and a like so I know you're here. Make sure you follow our page and turn on your notifications so that you'll get notified when I go live. But we're going to discuss organizing your pattern collection. Again, I don't like to call it a stash because that seems to be negative, like something uh, we've hidden away or it needs to be dealt with and gotten rid of. No, we need a collection. We need a resource center. So um, anyway, we'll get started on the pattern organization. I also want to cover how to organize all those leaflets and magazine, magazine articles you get or something you find on the internet. We get a barrage of, of information thrown at us. So we're going to cover those things too and help hopefully get some things under control and get some ideas to make it easier so that when we want to start a project we can find the pattern or the the handout that we want when we want it so let's go ahead and get started oh before I get started I did want to mention be sure to sign up for our newsletter at www.soinspiredbybonnie.com uh, when you sign up, we do hand out a couple of free designs, so you don't want to miss out on that. And also, you'll get notified when we are going live, as well as special sales and new releases and things of that nature. So go ahead, and I hope you'll sign up and join us. Um, I also wanted to let you know that if you're not able to watch us live, or watch me live, I should say, I will repost this video on my YouTube channel at So Inspired by Bonnie, as well as my Pinterest page. So any of those social networks uh, will have the live video replayed over there. So if you're not able to make it live, you'll still be able to follow up and, and watch it later. And I do follow up with them and answer questions as we go along. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with organizing our patterns. Now, <clears throat> many years ago, I started realizing I was getting more and more patterns. And maybe you're in the same boat, too, where I would start stuffing them everywhere I could find a place to stuff them in my sewing room. And it was getting so I couldn't find what I had purchased. I could, it was not organized. So I thought, there's got to be a better way. And I've used this system for many years, and it has worked for me. It's not glamorous, so I'll forewarn you about that, but it works. So um, I'm sure there's many out there, many of you out there that could pretty up this idea, but I'll give you the, the down and dirty idea I have that works. I found an old dresser, and I also discovered, let me pull out the top drawer here. I hope you can kind of see it. I also discovered that while my patterns would not fit vertically in the dresser drawer, they would fit horizontally. So I thought, cool, that'll, that'll work. And I also discovered that a lot of dresser drawers have about the same depth on, on the height of a dresser. And almost all patterns are about the same size. There are some exceptions, don't get me wrong, but most of the patterns are very similar in size. Uh, when you go to a fabric store, they're all in that uh, storage cabinet for the most part. The bulk of your patterns are in those storage cabinets in drawers. Now, they have them upright because they go by number, but we have them horizontal on this drawer. At least I think. I'm going from memory. Maybe they're horizontal too. I'll have to go double check myself on that one. Um, but anyway, I did discover that they would fit in here horizontally and still give me plenty of room to slide in and out with my drawer space. 
you can find if you don't have a chest of drawers that w works i'm sure you can find these at on craigslist or you could find them uh at an estate sale or flea market or or what have you this was just an old one that was handed down to me i spray painted it when the girls were little and they used it in their room and now it's finally wound up in my sewing room um but if you don't have a dresser that would work, plastic boxes come in all shapes and sizes. So do cardboard boxes. You could even cover them with fabric if you wanted. But what I would recommend if you're going with a fabric box or if you're going with the plastic boxes, I would highly recommend that you find a box size that works for your patterns and stick with that same size. Stick with the same color of boxes so that you have some continuity in your room and it looks a little bit tidier. If you have all different colors or all different sizes, it starts looking a little bit unorganized or uh, clust not clustered, but cluttered. Uh, so I would recommend having some continuity in the sizing. Then what I did was I got all my patterns. I found them from all over wherever I had them stashed. I put them on my, my cutting table and I divided and conquered. So what I did was I separated the men's patterns in one pile, children's patterns in another pile, maybe baby or infant patterns in another pile, and the ladies' pile uh, was the biggest pile, I'll admit, in, a, in another section. So I started making piles on my cutting board of the various patterns that I had. Then I kind of took a hint from uh, the catalogs that you go through to find the patterns you want to purchase at my sewing store and started making the categories for them so within the ladies I might have several that were shirts or jackets or skirts or pants I started making various categories for them I pulled out some file folders just your plain old average file folder now this looks like a small file folder and it is what I did was I took it I measured the height and the width I could fit three across in my particular dresser they worked really well doing that and I divided that got my measurement since I was doing three ac across and I cut the excess off that I wasn't going to need on the side I kept the top tab in place I also cut off the bottom I tried to make these a little bit higher a little bit taller than my pattern envelope but I made them so that they would still slide in and out of the drawer but tall enough um, or I should say I made them as tall as I could where they would still slide in and out of the drawer easily so I cut off the bottom like I said I cut off the side with my paper cutter and then I'm not quite sure why I did it maybe just for extra stability I taped them back together at the bottom so it still is like a little file folder. I don't think that's absolutely necessary. You could have just left that cut off and just use this part. But this seemed a little bit flimsy for me. So I just taped them together and used it like this. And I've been using these for several years and they've been working great. Then I just went to my trusty printer, or excuse me, computer, and I made some labels that I printed out. I also color coded the labels. So for my ladies, patterns I did them all in red for my men's patterns I did them all in blue and then for my craft pattern category because I had a craft section and a costume section I probably chose green I not in that drawer but I chose another color so everything was kind of color coordinated and then I just started loading them up in my in the drawer and the system has worked great uh, I, I don't have any complaints I can find uh, what I need when I need it and it's broken it down so that I'm just looking at a section for the jacket or for the pants pattern that I know that I have that's in a ladies pants pattern for example um, so what do you do when you've traced a pattern and you've used several of them and you can't quite fold it up back into the pattern envelope what I did was I got a plastic Ziploc bag that just fit a, it's a little bit bigger than my envelope, but not much and I had a little slop room I call it in my drawer to to jiggle back and forth. So it wasn't bad and I just put in the pattern I folded it up nice and neatly as best I could to the approximate size as best I could to the envelope 
and I put the envelope facing front so that I could see the picture of the pattern and then just simply fold the pattern down and stuffed it in my drawer with the other patterns. So um, even if, like this one over here, oh my goodness, I used this one a lot when the girls were little. I almost sewed all the girls' clothes when they were little. And I used several sizes off of here that I traced off. Well, I put it back in the Ziploc bag, folded it with the pattern piece out, and tuck it in the drawer. Works really slick. Um, it's not high tech, it's not super fancy, but it's organized and I can get what I want when I need it. So, how do you handle all of those handouts that you get at clubs or retreats or you find on the internet or that are in magazines or, oh my goodness, gosh knows where you got it, but you've got all these paper handouts and I know these, those can get out of control really quick, at least for me. <laughs> So what I did with that <clears throat> is I got myself several big binders. Now this is just a few of them, but and granted I'm probably a little excessive on this, but um, I used to uh, help teach clubs and stuff, so we I was always hunting for something that would work for a club project or something. Um, but we got these big black binders, and I got them all the same color so that when they are stashed away, um, it just looks a little bit tidier to me than having a hodgepodge of various colors. So then I started making some labels with my computer and my label. Uh, you could use a labeling machine if you had that. Whatever works for you. I put a label on here and I started again making categories. I started laying out on my trusty cutting board or cutting mat, um, cutting mat and board cutting table. Um, that's what I get for trying to think and talk and demonstrate at the same time. <laughs> but anyway, I, I started separating out all my flyers on my cutting table and I started getting categories. And when I got categories, then I, I knew what I was dealing with. So I have a baby, a bags and tote, a bath category, home deck, kitchen, um, organizers, outdoor, let me turn off that phone, um, home deck, sewing room, software projects, pets. I have others that have the quilt, quilt, um, quilting category in another three ring binder. I have all sorts of categories for my binders. Then what I did, and this one's pretty full, <laughs> is I just you can use dividers however however you want I, I made dividers that went inside that went inside the phone keeps ringing I'm so sorry I made um, dividers that went inside my three ring notebooks that co coincided with the categories that I had made then I put the um, projects in, let's see if I can hold this up, I put the projects in plastic sleeves so that I can keep them neat and tidy. So everything's in a plastic sleeve, everything has a category label in my three ring binder and everything is alphabetical. So they mix, that makes it very easy to find where I'm not hunting through a whole hodgepodge of projects and whatnot, I can just go to the category and look at the that section to find the project that I'm looking for. Now, a friend of mine, and I, on magazines, what I do with magazines is I'll go through a magazine. If there's an article that interests me, I'll just rip out those pages, put them in a plastic sleeve, and put them in the category in my three ring binder. Now, I have a friend that recommended, and what she does is she'll scan the pages in on her computer, and then she puts everything in the computer. So she has no paper mess anywhere. So she doesn't have three ring binders. She has everything scanned. And my stash, or see, I called it a stash. My collection is getting to the point where I am really considering that. I might go through these 
and start scanning these a little at a time because it'll take me quite a while to get through all of this. But I might start scanning them, put them in my computer by category. Obviously, I have my computer backed up. Um, we use a, pro, uh, a service called Carbonite. If you haven't heard of them, they're wonderful. They store everything to the cloud, so I don't have to worry about it. It automatically restores and recopies everything in the background while I'm working. But I got onto the farm to market road there. Anyway, if you scan them, put them in your computer, you can still organize them and categorize them how you want. That way too, if you have something that is in two separate categories, it could be used for two different things. Um, I can't think of something right off the top of my head. I know when I'm organizing, I do think Oh gosh, where does this go? You know, here or over here. You could actually copy and put them in both places. I have been known to make a copy and put them in both places, both paper places as well. Um, when I'm using the uh, three ring binders, if I'm I'm just not sure where I'm going to be hunting for it later because I'm thinking it can go into two different categories. And again, I can't think of an instance right off the top of my head, but I've run into that problem. If I'm really mm, struggling with it, I might make a photocopy and put it in both categories so that I'm not stressing about it later when I'm looking for it. So this has worked really well for me as well when I'm keeping all my flyers and magazines under control because I had magazines everywhere and I could not... Uh, go through all the magazines to find that particular project I was interested in. So I had to take that project out of the magazine and put it in its category in my three ring binder. But again, I really like the idea of scanning them in and putting them in your computer by category. You could also make an Excel spreadsheet and cross reference everything. I've heard of people doing that, which I think is really cool, but I needed something that was kind of fast and easy and not too time consuming. So I hope you've enjoyed those little tips on organizing your patterns and all your handouts. Um, let's go to the questions and then at the end I do have a little tip that was mailed in to me that I wanted to share with you. But let's first see if we have any questions about, about our pattern organization. Um, Ginger said she was a bit late and forgot to sign in. Well, we see you now, Ginger. No problem. And Anna says she's just started clearing out over a decade of magazines. I did the same thing, Anna. I feel your pain. I just, what I did when I was going through the magazines, I would maybe work on them 30 minutes a day at the max, an hour a day. And I would just go through them and really quickly, if something piqued my interest where I'm like, oh, I really like that, then I would tear it out and organize it. Uh, but don't try to do it all in one sitting because you'll get discouraged. Just figure that I'm going to spend a half hour or an hour a day and that's it, you know, and time yourself and just see how many you can get done in that amount of time. And you'll be surprised at how quickly you really will get that, that stash down. Ah, I called it a stash again. That collection down. <laughs> um, Brenda says, I use carbonite and it is the only way to go. Brenda, I'm with you. It is a lifesaver. I don't have to even think about making sure I have backups everywhere under the sun. I know it's there and then even if I'm out of town, I could go to my backup that's in the cloud and pull out the latest version of what's on my, my computer. So Carbonite is really a good service. I really like them. No affiliation, just really happy with their service. Carol says, I'm scanning in all my magazines, all my magazines, excuse me, and keeping just the pages with content, no ads. Carol, I agree. That's that's the way to go. Only keep what you like. Don't worry about anything like the advertising. You just, that's filler. You don't need to save all that. 
and then you know if my magazine wasn't too tore up where it had still several good projects in it just something that didn't interest me I donated them to either um, you know the school or a quilt guild or uh, some sewing group that I thought might benefit from the articles that were left in there and some of the magazines uh, I didn't tear out anything whatsoever so there were still several that were in pristine condition it's just um, there wasn't anything in it that interested me at the time and I was just going through them so they didn't make the cut some of them Sandy said I have a dresser drawers and the patterns fit three across it's the same with me uh, Sandy it's exactly the same I organize them by baby, adult sizes, small size, and ex small, small, medium, large, and extra large, and crafts. I have two drawers full. I pull out the patterns that are not useful in this decade. I have no great. I have no girl granddaughters, and I put them in a pattern boxes and store up high. That's a great idea. So what Sandy's saying is. Once she's gone through it and doesn't need it for the decade, she has an archive place for her patterns. So she puts those up high in the archives. I love it. <laughs> See, it's, it's not a stash. It's a collection. <laughs> you just never know when you might get a great granddaughter. Or you might need to sew for a little baby girl. You know, we all have friends and girlfriends and, uh, that are having babies. So... Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. Uh, so let's go on to the tip. And if you do have a question and I haven't seen it, let me refresh my page because sometimes that's why I'm not seeing the questions. Um, if I haven't seen your, your question, I will read it later today and I will answer. So don't feel like I'm ignoring you. Sometimes I can't see them all when we're in real time. So... Let's go on to the tip that we have for today. Well, that was a tip, but we have another tip, a bonus tip. Let's call it a bonus tip. Uh, I got this tip from Anne in Australia. So our Aussie friends are sending this in. And what she likes, to, this one has to do with using Solvi. Um, and she uses her old bent pins. You know those old bent pins that we all get? <clears throat> she said that she uses when she's... Uh, use, I have the fan on so that my solve is not staying still. But you're going to do this on a flat surface. She uses the bent pins to hold down the solve around the edges. And she likes to use the bent pins because it's, it's easier to get in and out, whereas a straight pin is really tough. You are more inclined to uh, distort the shape of your fabric that's in the hoop. So she likes to use a bent pin. And I'll read what she said. Uh, she loves to use bent pins for toppers, especially after trimming applique designs with minky or velvet. I use, this is Ann talking, I use bent pins to pin solvy in the hoop, but be very careful to keep them out of the way of your stitching. <clears throat> she also keeps the bent pins in a separate container just for that purpose. And many of you know that I like to save these little gum containers. Excuse me. I like to save these little gum containers for little tiny odds and ends. Put a little label on it for and say bent pens. So I thought that was a very clever tip. And I also have another suggestion when using Solvi on toppers that you might like. If you don't have any bent pens handy or you um uh well, this is just another option so you can try either way and see which one works works best for you because we all like different things um, I use like a little q-tip get it over here in the screen dip it in water but wring it out have it not very wet at all and then just wet the four corners of your solvy that are going to go in the hoop and that way you don't have to worry about going over a pen and you just want the solvy to be a little bit tacky and it'll stick right there onto the fabric uh, all by itself. Also what I like to try is the basting file. Many machines today have an auto basting file. You can use the auto basting file 
just hold the solve down in place a little bit let the auto basting file hold uh, tack it down and then you're also good to go so there's three different methods for holding down the solve in your hoop uh, with your embroidery and since Ann sent me that tip and I used it on the air I'm going to send her five six by ten sheets or six by twelve sheets of glitter flex and maybe not these exact colors but I'm gonna send her five half sheets or not half sheets but six by uh, 12 inch sheets of the glitter flex and we sell the glitter flex on our website they're under the supplies and glitter flex is a super sparkly material that works really well with any applique design so um, that's just a little thank you to Ann for sending in her very clever tip of reusing those bent pins um, I think We've covered all our questions, and again, if you have any questions while we're, you know, after we've signed off, please let me know, and I'll get back with you with an answer, or one of our other sewing friends will, I'm sure, have an answer as well, because we all have different ideas, and I would love to hear how you organize your patterns or your flyers, uh, because there's always room for improvement there's always room to make it a little bit better and like I said I might be scanning these in because having them in my computer and having no paper would save a lot of space in my sewing room and I'd have more room for other collectibles other fabrics uh, whatever I want to add to my resource center so I wanted to thank everybody for joining us, joining me today, not us, it's just me, <laughs> joining me today for the Tuesday's tip. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I do appreciate you showing up. So, we will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.